And hello, and welcome everyone to the comic multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet. Matt, I can't believe it's already Sunday night and it's already time for a show. I know in this era of quarantine, time has lost all meaning and it seems like one day bleeds into another, bleeds into another, but here we are. It, it's very true that it does bleed into another because like, I got halfway through last week and I'm like, really? It's, it's fucking Thursday already? And the fact that we missed Easter, we talked about this last week where it's like, oh yeah, that's just a... Just a holiday that we lost into the void of pandemic. We just didn't get to have it. Yeah, yeah. Usually, the, you know, you see all the people going off on their holidays or, you know, extended mm -hmm. vacations over that weekend. But yeah, nothing nothing happened. The good thing is mm -hmm. that Easter eggs were on sale. <laughs> They're all that, heavily that is, discounted. That is nice. I will have to be sure to get out there and get that uh, tomorrow. I actually got my stimulus, which will probably be here for tomorrow. So I'm going to pay some rent and get some eggs is nice. what I'm going to do. Nice. Uh, it's uh, it's fine. They actually changed the stimulus here where it's like, okay, so I guess you're going to have to be on this for a couple months longer than we thought. So if you match this, this, and this criteria, you can come back and get some more. And I'm like, oh, well, I might have been pushing it just getting the one. Well, I'll see about that, uh, Mr. Trudeau. I will see. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, too. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing black today because uh, I have put on more than the quarantine 15 and I'm trying to hide <laughs> it as best I can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's gonna be, it's going to be very interesting co coming out of this, like the amount of like I think gyms will see like a surge. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no freaking doubt. Well, here's the funny thing. There's a gym here in the building, and I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I'll go and uh, take some dumbbells and bring them up here uh, to my place to work out with just a little bit because it's like no one else in the building uses it. Oh, they've they've locked it. They've locked all common areas in the condo. Fucking of course they have. Of course. Also, th thanks. also thank you, Ultimate Dark Slayer. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course they, they, they would have because, you know, the, all the dumbbells are covered in corona absolutely i mean that just made me more resolute than ever i'm like well i've already gone this long telling my diet to go fuck itself so <laughs> i guess i'll just keep up with it then until society opens back up again and if it doesn't well at least i'll die of a happy coronary <laughs> That, again, as I mentioned last week, it's not even like I can harm my own body by just subsisting on fast food because, again, I'm too much of a coward to order fast food from anywhere now. So that ain't well, happening. Well, I, d I did that the other night. I got pizza, and it, w it was actually quite cool because they – of, like, all the extra steps they do. And I, I don't know whether you guys have it, but, like, when you order pizza here, they sure. have, like, a camera sort of thing that, like, allows oh. you – it, it, like, sends you photos to, like, quality control sort of oh, thing. Oh, that's cool. Where it's like, that pizza doesn't have enough pepperoni on it. Put more on it. <laughs> <laughs> or else. <laughs> no, I don't think we do have that here, but that sounds amazing. Why don't we have that here? That we sounds great. We had that great. before this whole thing happened, but I think it's become more uh, popular now to use that, that feature right. now because of this whole thing. I, uh, I live in the country, which is probably a good thing because it means I'm away from the bigger swaths of people, so less chance to get sick but bad because I can't use any of the uh, fast food apps and everything. No DoorDash, no yeah. uh, all those other things. I can only use them when I'm in the city, and it's always a treat to try that. Where it's like, oh, I put food in here from any place, and they just bring it to me, plus a nominal <laughs> fee, even places that don't normally deliver. <laughs> well, hot diggity damn uh what else have you been up to just uh getting by yeah just playing some video games catching up on those tv shows i uh i uh received a little money this week that i wasn't expecting and i actually took that and bought the resident evil 2 remake and i'm playing that through for the first I, time i did see you, you you bought that what do you think of it I'm really enjoying it. Boy, that game is whooping my ass, though, in some regards, because, you know, this this ain't the later Resident Evil games. This isn't four. This isn't even six. You got to be good with your ammo because you will run out of resources if you're not careful. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is classic Resident Evil stuff. Survival horror. Yeah, you got to manage your inventory. I just got to the point where Mr. X shows up and starts <laughs> hunting you all over the place. And in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've heard of this. Surely it can't be as bad as I remember. <laughs> Surely he's not going to chase me into the main hall with the safe. They go, oh, fuck me. He's behind me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He chases you into that main hallway. I do like, though, that you can you can hear if you're if you're good enough, you can hear him coming mm -hmm. from, from a little bit away and kind of like form a strategy. But I would I say this, to... the flash grenades work really well on him to, like, stun uh, him and allow you to run off. 
it's it's really good like level design too because everything kind of goes into everything else and it's mm -hmm. circular mm -hmm. so that's fun boarding up windows is fun it's uh yeah it's just a good time i i really had a moment there where i'm like wow they don't they don't make them like these anymore no 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 they don't except for i guess when they made it again for the resident evil nemesis <laughs> but you know outside that they don't make them like this anymore <laughs> I, I wonder if they do eventually do, uh, and I know we talked about this before, remake Resident Evil 4. Will they keep the action movie tone, or will they make it a little bit more difficult, I wonder? I don't know. I, I would like them to make it more in line with, like, what, what they're doing with 2 and 3, mainly just to keep continuity, like, mm -hmm. keep it consistent. Um, but I would like a little bit of that action movie sort of thing happen, and, like, maybe do it as, like, a joke like, like right. it's it's kind of like uh meta in a way right also thank you zeke for that subscription tier much appreciate i i think it would be nice if they gave you the option through like a difficulty slider where it's like look do you want original re4 or do you want like a uh, new updated re4 yeah yeah that'll be cool that would be fun but uh yeah i'm getting into that i gotta i gotta get the crank for the library is what i gotta do but mr x keeps killing me he's killed me like two times i haven't been able to get to the crank room yes, and yes. i got so many keys now <laughs> yeah it, it does it gets very difficult and there's the the dlc for it is also really cool as well oh what dlc was there for it i um, didn't even there's uh... like i can't remember what the, what they exactly call it but it's like like a series of small games um one when you play as kendo the gun shop owner um, nice. you get to learn about his story cool. uh, another one you play as the daughter of uh birkin oh wow I think, sherry I think, yeah well you play as her in the in the the claire uh scenario as well and there's, uh, there's like one more i just can't remember and i know there's like hunk the, the yeah i was gonna say do you get a hunk yeah hunk through the sewers because that was one of my favorite things in the original mm -hmm. yeah so that's cool uh yeah so just trying to catch up on some games uh i want to say did i catch up on some tv this week i want to say i finished something no nah, i haven't finished anything <laughs> i'm no okay no i didn't finish anything but i started new stuff what we do in the shadow season two mm -hmm. came back but not one but two episodes and they're great yeah they're fa i really love that ghost episode yeah, they're, they're both really goddamn good. It's hard to believe that Haley Joel Osment has managed to re, uh, what is it, rebirth himself as a comedy actor. I know, right? He's, he's so freaking good. That whole show is just good in general. There's nothing like it on TV at the moment. It is. It, I'm just so glad that the, the guys behind it, Jermaine Clement, Taika Waititi, all those guys, mm. were able to keep doing what they were doing. In, like Nothing was really changed except for the setting. Yeah, and even that's, that hasn't that's... really changed because it's very similar to the movie. Very much so. Agreed. Good, good, good stuff. If you have never seen the movie, what we do in the shadows, check it out and then check out the TV show. Yeah, because it's uh, it's good stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. The chat's reminding me, too, there that uh, PlayStation Plus this month for free. They put out a bunch of the Nathan Drake games, which I should really go back and play because I know I neglected a few of those. Yeah, well, a couple of months ago, they put the Nathan Drake collection on, which is the first three. And then this month, I they got gave that. away Uncharted 4. So technically, you now have all the Uncharted games except for Lost Legacy. Sweet. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I should probably make a point to go back and try and play those at some point. Oh, they're, they're fantastic games. I, I, they are. I don't know why that's always been a spot in my brain where I'm like, I'll get back to these eventually. <laughs> uh, but yes, as the chat keeps reminding us, yes, there is some news to talk about this week. Uh, some pretty big seismic news, actually. And I guess we'll start uh, at the top of things. Uh, only a couple days ago, it was announced that DC Comics has found a new distributor for its books. Not just a new distributor, two new distributors and when i say they found them i mean dc created two brand new distribution houses to have their comics in stores by the end of the month across north america those two distributors are called lunar distribution and the other one is ucs uh comic distribution and uh thank you to the detective work of our good friend sal from comic pop because he actually did a little digging and discovered that ucs comic distributor uh is actually owned by midtown comics from new york okay cool 
Yeah, which is also like, yeah, that's kind of a no-brainer. They're like one of the biggest, if the not the biggest, independent comic book shop in America. If anyone could be a distributor, it could be them. And apparently, yes, they are. And they're going to be doing both digital stuff and putting uh, comics in stores. Yeah, the, this is really good. Cool. But I don't think a lot of people read the article because you hear comics coming back on, I think it was the 28th, so next week. Yes. Um, yeah. People thought all the comics were coming back they're not mm-hmm. there's probably i think actually from dc two new books that's it and the rest of reprintings yeah. of like batman and i think nightwing yes i think i read an article today too saying if you wanted batman 82 or batman 92 from tyne and you might be waiting till june yeah but i know the week after on the the may may 5th there is actually new comic books like the flash green lantern hawkman all those comic yeah. books and then i think from then on it's just like us a, a small small portion every week that are yeah, yeah, rationing which, the comics kind of yeah we gotta ration them like war times you need you need to wait in line in the bread line only instead of getting bread you get your new dc comic <laughs> and we will be telling our grandkids i remember back in the bad old times in the scarce days <laughs> when i had to fight someone for the new copy of the flash <laughs> Shit, why aren't I going back and rereading Flash right now? That's exactly. what I should be doing. Perfect time. I'm actually I'm actually going back and rereading all the Miss Marvels I uh, missed. That's what oh, I did nice. today for a future video. Man, I was so fucking right about that next arc, and I didn't even know how right I was. <laughs> I complained. I'm like, I don't like the new costume. It's too spacey. Also, this story reminds me way too much of the black suit Spider-Man story. Wouldn't it be funny if the suit turned against her and was evil? Turned out that happened, and I was 100% right. <laughs> Though I wonder if that was always the case, because they made a big deal about changing the costume, and she kept it for a volume. I wonder if that was like a TV note, where it's like, no, 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 she's going to be in this suit when she gets the TV show, change it back. Probably. It feels like it probably was. <laughs> that being said, the suit itself is really creepy. It's got like this whole Slender Man thing going on, where it can like stretch itself into weird inhuman Ooh, shapes. Cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very creepy. I enjoy it. But yeah, so we now have two brand new distribution houses for comics. The first time this has ever happened, the first time DC has ever put behind any company that wasn't Diamond. So like, this is a seismic shift to the industry. And the big question is, okay, Diamond dropped the ball and couldn't do their job. DC still needed to make money and still had stories and stuff that it needed to print. So they created a means to do so. If this works really well for them, are they going to keep this going once the pandemic has ended? I, I could see it, see them doing that. It, it, it all depends on these first couple of weeks, really. Like what what sales are like, what how it all like. If there's no like clusterfuck in actual distribution, like yeah, no, yeah nothing yeah. holding it up or anything. Um, if it's done safely as well, it's not like oh yeah, they set but... these companies up and they're now like a breeding ground for the for the coronavirus for disease exactly yeah that would be bad also too the comics are going to stores but stores are still closed for the most part so you still got to work out a deal with your mom and pop brick and mortar to you know do curbside delivery to do no contact delivery and everything else that's on you this is just a way to get the comics in the store my hope my genuine hope is that this does work well for DC, that it is profitable for DC, and they eventually realize, oh, I guess we didn't need Diamond at all. I guess it took a massive, huge catastrophe like this to make us realize we didn't need this archaic company hanging around our fucking neck because that's just the way things have always been done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully it does because, you know, Diamond kind of has a stranglehold on, on the, the industry at the moment um yeah with them shutting down it basically ceased production on both of these companies and all these other smaller companies like image and all it, that it hobbled the whole fucking industry for yeah. two months <laughs> Where, and if they can if they can easily just create their own why not why not what why not? I'm sure a lot of it was fear, and I'm sure a lot of it was laziness, too, where it's just like, you know, well, we've done this forever. Why why stop now? You know, we, we know the Diamond executives. We're friends with them. They're friends with us. We don't want to put them out of work, et cetera, et cetera. But now we are literally at a time of feast or famine where if you don't do something, you're not going to be able to pay your own people, and you're not going to be able to keep the lights on at your own place. So sorry, Diamond. We got to do what's best for us at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And uh, it's also one of those things, too, obviously people in the chat are saying, well, what does this mean for Marvel now? Mar Marvel, uh, I'm surprised to see them not jump on something like this first with their infrastructure that they already have. I think they had said earlier on, and we talked about in another episode, that they're they're waiting and they're banking some stuff and they're going to put it out at some point. Didn't they say they were going to put out like 5% or something? They had like an actual number? Yeah, one, one third or something of their of what they've got so far uh, that have banked up over the last couple of weeks. Um, that was a But yeah, whenever that's going to happen, because yeah, they've been strangely silent in all of this. Indeed, they have no no new word yet on their distribution method. If they too are going to create their own means to distribute, or wouldn't it be funny if Marvel just came over and said, "Hey, DC, can we uh, can, can we hop in with you? Can we uh, can we get some of this going?" <laughs> that would be a, that would actually be a great partnership if they teamed it together would. to to run these two distribution hubs um, and, and basically force force uh, Diamond out of the whole business. Again, that would be swapping kind of one monopoly for another monopoly, but at the same time, too, it would mean DC and Marvel would have to work together and have to be nice to each other, and which, I mean, considering they trade, ba uh, what is it, they trade writers and artists and executive back and forth all the time, mm -hmm. what could it really hurt? Hell, if anything, it could help, and maybe at the end of it, uh, what is it, we could get another freaking DC Marvel crossover like the, everyone the wanted. The crisis that Donny Cates and and jeff johns have been batting back and forth <laughs> this this is it jeff johns he looked into the ether he opened his third <laughs> eye and he knew that this would be the future he saw that it would come to pass <laughs> that's that's why doomsday clock get kept getting pushed back because yep. uh what is it jeff johns kept going into his odin sleep and kept imagining <laughs> these futures he dreamed it in darkness and kept, now it has come to light he kept going off and putting things in place so that this could happen <laughs> <laughs> now look we're not saying that jeff johns was responsible for this outbreak just to get dc and marvel to work together all i'm saying is is i see no proof to the contrary <laughs> and i mean the the absence of evidence is no evidence of absence ah 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 that's a thing someone said sometime but yeah good good on dc for this i really wasn't expecting them to be the ones to jump first but uh, i'm glad they have yeah, yeah, it's good. it's going to be good to finally have comics come back. Yeah, some new comics that uh, you know that aren't the Batman Adventure continues, which is good and has definitely been a boon in this time. Mm -hmm. But still, yeah, and and it's coming at a really good time as well because I'm I'm starting to run low. I'm starting to run low. I'm, I've, as... I've like almost caught up on my whole backlog. Same, same with me. That's why I've been putting out riffs and more interesting stuff. I was going to start reviewing My Hero Academia soon because people keep asking for it. <laughs> And I figure, what better time than now? So look, look, look out for that next week, everyone, because that's probably what I'm going to be doing next week, <laughs> sometime. Uh, yeah. What uh, What else did I have to say on the back of this? Any at all? Uh, it's It's funny too that DC ended up doing this first, because truth be told, I'm reading less DC books than I ever have before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm happy to see some of them come back in the back of my mind, I'm like, mm, I would have liked if it was Empire, though. <laughs> Would have, would have liked if it was a Mortal Hulk or Daredevil, but I guess I'll be okay with Batman and Justice League Dark and, like, the handful of DC titles I still read. <laughs> Thank God, uh, what is it, White Knight ended when it did. Imagine if we had to keep waiting oh, for God. that finale. I, I was thinking, like, during this whole thing, it's like, oh, can you imagine if, like, those last, like, two issues of Doomsday Clock got pushed back? Oh, God, because of this? <laughs> now we don't know when it's getting out. Could be whenever. <laughs> Could be never. Who knows? But uh, yeah, there's there's your DC news, everyone. There's your new comic book update news, and hopefully this means that uh, happy times are ahead, and that we can maybe you know get what we're uh, get what we've been fiending for, what we've been after. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so moving on from there, we got our next piece of news. It's also a DC story, but this one is from the world of television. J.J. Uh, Abrams is apparently developing that Justice League Dark show for HBO Max, and apparently it's actually moving ahead a little bit. I know we had heard before that he was developing projects for HBO Max and that HBO Max was interested in doing DC shows, but now this is 100% official ski. Yeah, well, when when he's in the producer role, uh, things tend to turn out very well. Uh, Westworld, um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, most definitely. It's funny, you know, Justice League Dark is one of those properties that it looks like they've had in the hopper for so long. Because they and that have. They've tried to 
because they because they literally have Guillermo del Toro was supposed to do one. It was supposed to be a movie, and now they finally decided, well, maybe it'll be a TV show. Maybe it'll do better there, and we could take a crack at it that way. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's what's going to happen. They have said nothing about it yet, what angle they're going to take for Justice League Dark, what era of the team they're going to do. But, hey, paranormal superhero show, why not? Yeah, that, that's great. Uh, that, that's so cool. I, I would like if they did... I'd like if they did the James Tynan stuff just because it's so so like horror centric and weird, like with it the is. Upside Down Man and all that sort of shit. Like I think Upside Down Man would make it like a really good villain. Agreed. It also encompasses so much of DC's magical world of totally untouched mm -hmm. characters that you would never have to worry about yeah. showing up in movies and confusing people. Then again. DC is at this weird place now in their movies and in their media where they're like, fuck it, throw anything at the wall. Nothing matters anymore. We're not building up to a new Justice League. Who cares? We'll have three Jokers. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll have three Jokers. We'll have a new Batman, probably a new Superman soon. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no. Who, uh, who's your ideal Justice League Dark team? Who who do you think has to be on uh, Has to be on it? Um, well, just going off the picture I use, you got to have Zatanna. Yep, there you go. She's your POV character, strong female character. Never really appeared in any of the other live action movies. There's a ton of untapped material there. She's probably she's probably the most TV ready, I would agree. Yeah, well her last appearance was on was on TV in live action. Um Yeah, so there you go. Uh probably I would prob I'd say Swamp Thing, but seeing as like what how they handled the last Swamp Thing show, I'd say like <laughs> It's yeah probably not gonna happen it's a little too fresh a little too new i i see your swamp thing and i raise you again also on the picture you used etrigan the demon because talk about another character who hasn't really been done in live action hasn't really been given a lot of credence i think if you expose him to a larger audience people would love him where it's like yo he's a medieval ass knight who was cursed by morgan lefay now he's kind of like a magical hulk who transforms and speaks in rhyme that's good shit yeah, the, 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 and that would be an, an extra little creative thing if they could make all his speech in rhyme. Because sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. And when it does yeah. happen, it's really fun. I, I just really want to see in glorious live action, Gone, gone, the flesh of man, unleash the demon Etrigan. <laughs> Can't tell me that won't be cool as fuck if we got that in the thing. Uh, yeah, definitely him. Uh, who else would we put on the team? um space lord says animal man animal man would be fun it would be cool to put him somewhere then you know if you got animal man there you could still have the whole connection to the uh red and the green and you could start putting that stuff in which would always be cool mm -hmm. uh we know obviously wonder woman is definitely not going to be on this no again i think that would be too big would probably confuse people same with constantine because constantine's already on a whole other network yeah I'd like to see Detective Chimp because Detective Chimp is just a fun concept. Yeah, yeah, it'd, it'd be it'd be like the like the Rocket Raccoon. Absolutely, you couldn't have uh, Batman, but Man Bat would be fun again. From the mm. current run, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor Fate. Yeah, Doctor Fate again. You figure you figure if he's not on the team, he would have to be involved at some point. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you could have your Dead Man uh, if you want some comedy relief in there. Resurrection Man, even if you want to mm -hmm. get, uh, what is it, really deep in there. Yep. For references. There's a lot of fantasy and you magical know, characters. Blue Devil. You know who they could have? Oh, no, wait. He was in, he was in fucking Legends as well. I was going to say they could have. Oh, no, he wasn't in Legends. He was in Doom Patrol. It was the guy who Grant Morrison created when he couldn't use John Constantine, and he ended up just being... Ah, uh, yes, he's, bad he's, guy. He's John Constantine. I can't remember what his John name is. Yes, John Constantine. Life. Yeah, Madam Xanadu, that would be another interesting one, although I feel Xanadu and uh, Blue Devil, are they still too close to Swamp Thing? Mm. That would be the problem. Ooh, Frankenstein, Agent of Shade. That would oh, be a good yeah. one. yeah. I like that one a lot. That'd be a really fun one. Hell, can we have a whole episode about the Creature Commandos? I went back and watched uh, that D or, uh, DC showcase they did, Sergeant Rock and the Howling yeah. Commandos. That was so good. Or no, the cre sorry, Creature Commandos. Howling Commandos is Marvel. But yeah, well, why is that not in more things? Freaking World War II vampires and Frankensteins fighting know, for right? America. I know, right? That's such a cool pitch. Yeah, honestly, put Frankenstein in anything, and that would be super cool. Yeah. Um... 
again again like you could do like I just just throw sergeant rock in there as just like oh he's just been pulled yeah, why into, not? The f- into the present from the past or something who uh who's the vampire from i vampire like the main uh, one who and- the series follows andrew bennett i think his name yes is. there you go yeah sure throw him in there why don't you <laughs> yeah yeah why not <laughs> everyone loves a vampire there you go he can be the constantine guy in there we've got yeah. a vampire could, he's you cool could, you could do basically like gotham city monsters yeah yeah at that point because it's like hey look look at all these extra monsters we have to put in stuff yeah Look, what I'm saying, J.J. Abrams, is let Matt and me write the show because we know all the characters. We know who we would put in there. <laughs> we're we're going to make you go broke on the CG budget, unfortunately, because they're all monsters or demons or some variety. That'll all be practical effects. All be practical effects. Yeah, why not, Clayface? Zeke, I agree. He's kind of a monster. He's a sad actor. His name is Basil Carlo, which is a reference to Boris Karloff, so mm-hmm. why not? That'd be cool. He's never been on Justice League Dark before, but he makes sense. He's been missing from the comics for the longest time. Yeah, well, he was in that Tom King run, but we don't talk about that, so. No, we we never, never, ever talk about that. Uh, all right then. So yeah, there's your J.J. Abrams Justice League Dark news, everyone. That's interesting. Although in the back of my mind, too, I'm like, God damn it, they're gonna make me get HBO fucking Max, aren't they? <laughs> well, no, in my luck, it's not actually gonna come out here, and it'll be on some fucking other platform i've got to buy yeah that's like true how, how many like watch doom patrol and titans i need two separate subscriptions how and many how just nowhere yeah also that how many apps hollywood how many until you are satiated <laughs> so be on quibi oh yeah quibi, in 15 quibi minutes, Chuck's. <laughs> uh see i would love to make fun of quibi but there's so many comedians and writers i follow on twitter who got jobs on quibi doing 15 minute shorts which apparently that's all it is it's just do your thing but do it in 15 minutes yeah it's like tiktok that was made longer basically yeah which honestly you know on one hand i'm like wow that's really smart to give all these talented people free reign to do whatever they want so long as it's 15 minutes but in the back of my mind i'm like hey that's about as long as your average really good YouTube video. Hey, are they building this for short attention spans? Fuck. <laughs> are attention spans that short now that we need to make shorter and shorter shows? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait for the new Dick Wolf show that's only 10 minutes long. <laughs> dun, 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 murder. Hey, it was that guy. We got him. Trial. Jail. Yeah, it'll just be dun. act one of the Law and Order episode where you think they, they, they go and capture that one rapist and mm-hmm. it's never in because it's, so, it's still got 30 minutes of the show left over yeah. but but it turns mm-hmm. out it actually is is him because he's a rapist <laughs> yeah it turns out we actually got it and won everyone all right good <laughs> yeah. job yeah these cops are really good at their job <laughs> yeah let's go to the bar everybody yeah don't you love that when you're watching a cop show or a police procedural and they're like we got the guy i'm like no you didn't it's the first 15 minutes couldn't possibly be <laughs> him still 30 minutes left yeah, you never get the guy in the first 15 minutes. It's always going to be like he's either going to die in custody and you're going to have to investigate that crime or he was innocent or because the killer struck again while he was in custody. Mm-hmm. That's that's the rules. I would make such a good fucking cop because I watch so much Law and Order. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I wouldn't. I've been one of the shows I have been binging during this is the first forty-eight. That show where they try and like solve murders, <laughs> like real murders, yep. in forty-eight hours. And the answer is no. It's actually way harder than you think it is, but also weirdly more easy than you think it is. Because like on cop shows, oh, we'll run his name through the police database. There's no police database. They put your name into Facebook. That's how they find you in real life. <laughs> yeah, they they. Oh, no, he fu- just posted on Instagram. <laughs> fucking literally that's what it is and it's even more terrifying because you see like the gap between the older cops who have been there for 30 years and like the 20 year old new cops who are just getting in there and they're like hey we should check his social media and the old cops are like social media you mean social security (laughs) yeah i i I was just gonna go out on the streets and start you know beating up people until they tell me what i want to (laughs) know that's crazy it's crazy too where it's like they'll go they'll be like months and the cops won't find out anything and then a random tipster will call in usually when there's money on the line Mm -hmm. i'm like really so that killer was walking around for three months and you had no idea until someone dropped a dime on him for real yeah and even then like like tips like 
it could just be from anyone yeah and like the amount of like like i know i know like because i've like watched stuff like that where they've like set up tip lines and they'll mm-hmm. get like like hundreds of calls about people who've seen said missing person but really they haven't they're just calling up just for their like little bit of fame yeah uh, a lot of uh serial confessors oh god what, what was the other thing that blew my mind oh dna takes like six months like in a cop show oh we got the dna back a day later now oh, that takes like six months in <laughs> real life <laughs> to actually like get dna done if they even do dna also here's another fucked up thing about the first 48 and cop shows in general there are so many times watching that show where you know that they would have blamed it on the first guy they brought in if they didn't have a whole camera crew watching them for this show yeah okay (laughs) they're like so you did it right yeah we're pretty sure he did it yeah we're almost certain that he did it but he hasn't confessed and you don't have yeah but we're pretty sure we can arrest him (laughs) look i want to go home dancing with the stars is on <laughs> like like literally that's the thing and the camera crew is there like maybe we should make a few more calls because if not we totally would have locked this guy up is the same on like cops where, yes where like they'll chase down a perp and like they'll get ahead of the camera crew a little bit so they can you know throw those couple of punches a little bit more <laughs> uh, uh, no i didn't no i didn't he didn't did, he, he, he came at me with a chain <laughs> he came at me with a chainsaw you saw it <laughs> Oh, man, yeah, the first 48 is a fucking trip. I imagine it'd be too hardcore for other people because it's, like, real murders. The thing that really blows me away about it that makes it so much more different than television because, like, every TV cop show, there's that moment where, like, the villain of the week, usually the character actor, you know, does a big, long soliloquy, and it's like, and this is why I did it, and this is why I thought I could get away with it. In the first 48, in real murders... Sometimes they just clam up and don't tell you, and the cops never know why, and you can tell. It's like, wow, that detective's going to go and, like, drink a whole bottle of rye tonight, and that's going to keep him up because he doesn't know why this dude killed five people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they just they just don't say anything. And yeah, yeah, nothing at all. It's nothing so at all, and there's, and there's no reason for it. It's just like I've seen that happen multiple times on that show, and that just blows me away. <laughs> that it's like, why? Why did you do it? I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> so freaking nuts. But uh, hey, comic news, everybody. <laughs> and uh, this one actually dovetails quite nicely with two of the things we've been talking about. Uh, Diamond Distributor, the old cartel of comics, and uh, the the horrible things happening in the world of healthcare and uh, contagious diseases. Well, apparently, Dan Manser, the former head of Diamond Digital Marketing, apparently he's been with the company for like 20 years, announced this week that he's actually going to be leaving that job to take a new job as a marketing director for a, a major healthcare company in the states. Yeah, so I, I, maybe maybe jump and ship, jump and ship. This like this feels like a joke. This story. This feels like, hey, you know, you hear uh, Diamond's not doing so good. Oh yeah, you know, they're marketing really in the toil. But you know what's doing great? The healthcare industry right now. It's really booming. It's a real growth industry right now. Be sure to get in on the ground floor when you can. Diamond distributors come become like Diamond N95 distributors. Oh man, <laughs> Diamond Distributor Health Insurance. You can trust us. <laughs> We're the only game in town. Oh, well, it seems here, Diamond, that you've just been lying about numbers for a long p- amount of time. <laughs> also, I tried to fill out this form online, but you kept saying it didn't count. Nothing online counts. <laughs> it never counts. It's a different audience. Yeah, shut up. Different audience didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, our survival is uh, tied to your survival. We uh, we promised. It, no, but it literally is, though. <laughs> oh, well, that's helpful. That's that's good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there, there's really not much to talk about here. I just thought that that was so fucking hilarious, and I would be remiss to say that that one of the longest tenured dudes working at Diamond has now made the jump to work in the healthcare industry. Yeah, that doesn't send a good image. Doesn't send a good image. No, that all these people uh, are trying to jump ship and go elsewhere. Well, th- again, we talked about that story a while back that apparently Diamond is in such dire straits now it can't even, like, pay a bunch of the people that work there anymore. Yeah, and it, it has only been closed for just coming up on a month. Yeah. Not even that, so, really, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, really, was, was your business so built on a house of cards built on sand that two months of inactivity could hurt you so hard? Yeah. Uh, the answer is yes, apparently. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
And as we mentioned earlier, DC is trying alternate avenues now, and I hope those alternate avenues, uh, uh, you know, work out for them. Obviously, I feel bad for all the people who do work at Diamond who could potentially lose their jobs, but even still, it's just like, man. You have to wonder, man. though, like, if, like, because DC is setting up these two companies, whether they'll try and, like, poach a bunch of the people that worked at that mm -hmm. distributor because they already, like, kind of know the system and everything. You would, you would hope that's the way they go and that's the way they do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So, speaking of people who are being fired and let go, the uh, chat reminded me there. I know you're dipping your toes into the world of wrestling, Matt. Did you see that WWE got themselves called an essential business but then fired, like, a ton of their roster anyway? I did see that, yes. <laughs> They did, and like certain people, where it's like this guy worked here for 16 years. This guy's worked here since the 80s. I mean, they haven't done much in that time, but still. <laughs> the uh, the funniest one was Gallus and Anderson, two guys who were a big deal in Japan, part of the original Bullet Club. Apparently, threatened to walk out quite a few times for better deals, and they kept getting better and better contracts. I think they were getting paid somewhere like upwards of five million last time I was pay uh, paying attention, and mostly it was to keep them from going other places is what it was because that's what vince mcmahon will do it's like look i will pay you just to sit at home so you can't work for my competition and make them any money it'll be interesting to see which ones like if if any go head over to like aew oh yeah oh well they certainly will in fact i i would bet good money that gallus and anderson would probably show up in aew if only because they are good friends with the young bucks who were their mm -hmm. old bullet club compatriots back from japan then again aew finds itself in an interesting position too where it's like okay guys you're a new company you got a lot of money to throw around but you can't buy up everyone that wwe got <laughs> rid of even if they are your friends and there's big talk that the revival are going there too because they uh they got released uh before this big round of releases so it'll be very interesting yeah yeah it, it's gonna make for interesting aew tv Television. in the next couple oh, for of months sure. <laughs> Uh, oh, no doubt about it, which actually AEW, they're still going to be having their all-in pay-per-view at the end of May. Oh, really? I, I was really confused at whether they were going to have that or not. They they are going to have it. It's not going to be in Vegas, which it normally is because it has the gambling theme all-in. All-in was actually their very first show, even before they became AEW, so it's like very important to them. Mm -hmm. It's... It's gonna be it's gonna be a pay per view, but it's gonna be another empty arena pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> but at least but at least they they have fun with it, unlike yes. WWE, which is just like those clips. They yep. like someone edited them into like an Eric Andre show, and they fit ah, so nice. fucking well. Ah, uh, that's good. That's good. That being said, apparently for the next, uh, what is it, the next WWE pay-per-view, because the cops keep running them out of the performance center, because even though they've been they've been claimed to be essential, they really still shouldn't be there, and they still pose a major, uh, major health risk. Apparently, they're going to have the next pay-per-view at WWE headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut, and instead of like a ladder match, where it's like, oh, you got to climb the ladder and get the contract in the briefcase, this time, apparently, they're going to have the contract briefcase on top of the roof and you have to wrestle and fight your way up the uh titan tower to get it that that that'd be pretty cool and i'm like that actually sounds amazing also thank you g boo for uh subscribing appreciate it i i i'd love if they just like oh we're gonna have it, have it at the the hq we're just gonna fight in the loading dock yeah, that's literally what it sounds <laughs> like, like a bunch of teamsters over in the corner just like sitting down watching them <laughs> Yeah, 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 literally amazing Spider-Man. It's Die Hard Wrestling Edition. In fact, I hope they make it even more like Die Hard. It's just Vince McMahon sprinkling broken glass all over the place. <laughs> now wrestle. <laughs> A little more broken glass because there's already broken glass all over the floor. True enough, just fills it with broken glass. All right, now I'm going to let these hungry dogs loose in the building. <laughs> uh you, you you laugh but they actually tried to do that once it was called the kennel from hell match and it was terrible oh jeez. <laughs> mainly mainly because the dogs didn't give a shit <laughs> the dogs were super super uninterested of course they were <laughs> he didn't but give, uh, he, yeah he was meant to vince mcmahon was meant to give them the cocaine but the problem is uh, he, he did all the cocaine before he could give it to them <laughs> yeah which uh which one sorry nope 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 what nope what nope <laughs> 
Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, ooh, some Star Wars news that I'm sure you'll be very much uh, interested in. Uh, ahead of the return of The Mandalorian Season 2, uh, Disney Plus is going to be coming out with a brand new eight-part documentary series for Star Wars Day, I'm guessing, on the creation of The Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's called Disney Gallery, and each each episode focuses on a specific part of The Mandalorian's production. Like, I think the first episode is oh. about directing, second is casting or characters or something right. then like sets and and like the technology used behind it and all and also all the stuff that i really want to see because the stuff yeah, that, that the mandalorian was made with was some pretty fucking cool shit yeah no uh no doubt about it yeah that sounds uh super super awesome and again just you know uh highlights this new uh r- renewed i should say vigor in star wars right now because we got this coming up uh we got the clone wars which is just coming to an end actually they started their final arc this week Mm -hmm. and it was awesome it really was it 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 was so good it totally made me forget about that last lack luster (laughs) arc that they did yeah yeah it's just uh, like a complete like change in pace like a light switch has been turned on and the quality has just gone up like tenfold I, I very much believe that they kind of Frankensteined this last season because the first arc was the Bad Batch, which we had already seen as story reel, so they just had to update that. Mm-hmm. I bet the whole Pike Spice arc was an old script that they had sitting around that they never got to make until now, and this final arc is like actual new shit that they wrote. The Pike stuff, it, it that feels like it it was like oh this is like part of the ahsoka novel that never got made into the novel like like a couple mm. of chapters of that like so oh, ahsoka goes and hangs out with these two annoying women and and mm. and and crosses the pikes in really stupid ways <laughs> yeah but also bo katan is there at the end so don't worry <laughs> yeah but yeah this like the siege of mandalore arc, it's it's off to a good start and it's it's already laying seeds into like episode three Yes, they certainly are. I I loved their reasoning where it's like, okay, so why why can't Obi Wan and uh, Anakin uh, take part in the siege of Mandalore? Oh, because they got to go to Coruscant to protect Palpatine from getting kidnapped by Grievous. Yeah, it, it was very, it's really cool, interesting as well because like we obviously in that in that episode we learned that like Maul like did all this to lure Anakin and Obi Wan. Yeah, and, and like I in the back of my mind I'm like, oh, is this like like a game? of chess with like him and like palpatine and palpatine knew he was trying to do that so palpatine ordered right. grievous to kidnap him and to call anakin and obi-wan back to coruscant we we do run into a rather interesting piece of i'm not going to call it discontinuity but into an an interesting piece of uh i guess you could call it priorities because uh, ahsoka and obi-wan kind of have it out in a moral debate where she's like, look, you know, if the Jedi don't help the Mandalorians, then, you know, they're as bad as all these people are saying they are. You're not helping people in need. I've seen the other side of the universe, yada, yada, yada. But in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, that's right in theory, Ahsoka. But no, Obi-Wan is totally right, though. Stopping Darth Maul won't stop the Clone War. And even though we know Palpatine is evil, he's still basically the president of space. Yeah, and, and it's even better coming from Obi-Wan as well, because he has so much so much of a reason to want to kill darth maul for killing mm-hmm. over, uh, killing quagon Satine. he's and, basically his arch nemesis yeah yeah and and he puts all of that aside to say look ki- killing him now won't end anything it won't change anything i i do believe he literally says uh what is it i don't uh i'm not letting my emotions cloud my choices here to which then they hard cut to anakin <laughs> where it's like what what, what why, did, why did you hard cut to me guess what he's going to be doing in the next couple of days <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Letting his emotions literally ruin everything for everybody. <laughs> they uh, they also answer some questions that have been hanging in the air for a bit right now, and that is like, hey, why wasn't Rex with uh, Anakin when he killed all those children? Oh, because they split the 501st, that's why. Yeah, it's, it, he was made to be put in charge of the clones on Mandalore because technically Ahsoka is not part of the Jedi Order anymore. Right, but he also got that promotion he's been after for a long time. Yeah. 
So good on him for that. I, he finally got that one going for him. Uh, oh, they uh, reveal uh, where the name Fulcrum came from. Apparently that was Anakin's old subspace frequency that Ahsoka would end up taking as her alias into the Rebels era. Yeah, well, not only the her, but also like Saw Gerrera and all of them used it. So it was, again, like one of those one of those names that everyone kind of could use. A nom de plume, if you do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was very cool. And also like, oh, she took that as kind of like uh, a tribute to Anakin before she really knew uh, what happened with him and Vader and everything. Oh, that's kind of sad. Also, what a sweet moment, too, when Anakin gives her back her lightsabers and they play uh, Yoda's theme. Yeah, and it's funny as well. They're, they're, they're obviously a different color than what's in the Ahsoka book. And um, mm -hmm. I think one of the guys who, who's like in charge of like, the canon said, look, you know, these shows are a bit more important than the books, even though everything is like connected but these yeah we're, we're just saying <laughs> we're just saying we thought it would look cool and indeed it looked cool it did <laughs> we uh we even again speaking of the comics we even get a little uh cross over there yeah. we see gar saxon again from the sons of dathomir comic who would eventually end up becoming viceroy of mandalore under uh what is it the empire yeah we see gar saxon and his uh like lady lieutenant who's also in the comic yeah, she doesn't get any lines though, but she's there in the back for the for the people who know for the real OGs. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that was a really awesome episode. Did you catch to well, I'm sure you did. When Darth Maul eventually does show up stepping out of the shadows, they play the exact same music that played when he first appeared on screen in Phantom Menace. Yep. They used to, Again, this man. this is like the first episode re re really in in the clone wars that has been scored almost entirely by mo movie music like m it's, music from it's the crazy. movies and what's even cool is that someone else pointed this out i, I kind of picked up on it well wasn't really too sure about it when i watched the episode but when uh ahsoka is launching the siege of mandalore it plays the exact same music as at the start of episode three to sort of signal that the, uh... the battle of coruscant is happening at the same time as the siege of mandalore Oh, that's really cool, actually. Man, it's fun to see this all work out. And again, for the final arc to basically boil down to Ahsoka versus Maul. At first, it doesn't make sense, but then you think, no, it actually makes perfect sense because Ahsoka is the big character that they launched off the back of this, with Rex as a close second, I would say. And Maul is the character that they probably worked harder than any other villain to actually try and rehab and give a reason and give, you know, uh, actual characterization. So to see it come down to them to in the end makes sense even though you know they're both going to eventually survive this because they got to do other shit in rebels <laughs> again that's the thing like you keep, you got to remember that they survive but even still you're like invested in it all you're like oh what's totally. going to happen next it's it's how to make a good prequel story versus how to make a bad prequel story when even though i know where this ends i still care yeah most definitely but yeah rebels is great i'm looking forward to this uh documentary this should be a lot of fun mm -hmm. uh what else do we got going on here bum ba dum ba dum ba dum uh oh yes i wanted to update everyone again on the mainframe comic-con that's quickly turning into the biggest online comic-con of them all right now i had mentioned them uh last week with a little pinch of salt that i had been talking to them and they didn't write me back of course the second i was done with this they wrote me back <laughs> and uh, i talked to the people in charge and i will probably be doing something with them on saturday uh i'm not gonna say what exactly yet because obviously you know things could still change uh even this close to the actual show itself but check it out they got literally a ton of celebrities mm -hmm. which is blowing me away every day they seem to add someone new yeah. and of course it's for a it's for a good cause. It's for the Hero Initiative, for the American Red Cross. You can donate and everything to it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's super cool. They got, like, friggin' Lloyd Kaufman. They got, uh, what is it? They got Coulson. They got Clark Gregg. They got so many of your favorite people. Joe Hill, uh, the writer, Lloyd frickin' Kaufman. It, it literally is a convention you would go to, only it's online. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. It certainly is. Uh, of course, uh, for those paying attention to me and what I do, uh, I did the at-home Comic-Con uh, this week uh, with Sal and Jason Inman. I think by the end, they actually ended up raising $7,000 oh, nice. for charity. 
yeah, I know their goal was 10, but they made seven. So, you know, hey, let's let's take that good energy and let's roll that into mainframe. You know, I got I got, I got a good feeling about this. I got a good feeling about the show. But yes, I I will be involved. Uh, be sure to follow my Twitter and social media. I will try and keep everyone up to date on that. That's uh, the uh, the comic core people I've been dealing with. Uh, when I talked to about that, uh, obviously I've seen their videos online and a bunch of them follow me on Instagram, but they're, they're good people. They're super, super passionate and super dedicated into making a really cool show that we can all enjoy. And I know I said this last week, but I'll say it again, man, you know, if this, uh, if this keeps up and everything, it would be super cool to see this become a regular thing now moving into the future. Absolutely. It'd, it'd be, uh, really cool. It'd give people like me, a ch me a chance. You can't obviously come to like the big comic cons over in America and stuff a chance to, Naturally. to get involved in everything totally and you know it's one of those things too where it's like man you know obviously a lot of bad has come because of this coronavirus thing but a lot of good has come too in the idea where it's like oh I guess we didn't all need to drive to work, huh? I guess most of us could do our work at home and oh I guess big conventions like this could still be done online, huh? Yeah. I guess so <laughs> I guess because so. Because I can tell you, I'm sure a lot of these celebrities, I'm sure if they could help it, they wouldn't want to travel to a new city and get everything in order. And I'm sure people wouldn't want to have to pay for their hotels and lodgings, but still get that fan interaction, still get that panel sense and everything. And you can even buy artwork and everything. So they've even moved the uh, Artist Alley thing online as well, which is super cool. Yeah, yeah I think that's that's <laughs> even better because, like, yeah, you don't um, – you can just, like, look at everything – like all at once you're not like battling crowds which i know is like a big thing at like these comic cons mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. sometimes it's like impossible to see what you want to see because there's so many people yeah if you, if you got that social anxiety you don't gotta worry you can do this one at home and let's face it, if you've ever been to a comic con you have run into some people with some social anxiety <laughs> maybe a little uh neuro atypicality going on <laughs> I, I I love taking people who have never been to cons before, and they're like, "Is that guy okay?" And I'm like, "No, he's okay. He just doesn't get out much." <laughs> and they're like, "And they're like, how do you know? Because there's one at every con, sometimes <laughs> more. I know. It is like the one constant in the universe." <laughs> Yeah, he's he, he's just living his best life right now with that shirt tucked in like to his socks and his fanny pack. He's just living his best life, man. <laughs> he's he's gonna he's gonna get his autograph signed. He's having a great day, man. He's having a great day, and I'm happy for him. <laughs> hey, those Crocs give him the comfort and the confidence to be out. <laughs> How did you know he was wearing Crocs, Matt? You've seen this guy too, I see. <laughs> hey, and you know what? Sometimes it's not always a guy. There's female versions of that guy too. <laughs> uh but yeah that's mainframe comic-con don't be shocked if i keep bringing this up as we get closer and closer uh to saturday mm -hmm. uh yes saturday the 25th which is uh yeah i guess it's next week yeah well this the, the, this coming week this um as you're watching this live or on the video it'll be this coming weekend right right so yeah i'll be sure to do something with that uh actually there's a there's a book i want to get back and read too as part of a project i might be doing with them uh, but, uh, yes, they wanted me to do an interview with someone who, uh, I am a fan of someone whose work I've mentioned, and I'm sure you can figure it out. Actually, if you follow my Instagram and my Facebook, I may have dropped some not so subtle hints about it. It is Tom King. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. They find me and Tom King, one room, one night only <laughs> in a Texas cage match. <laughs> Honestly, I'm pretty sure he could kick my ass. What with being in the CIA and everything. <laughs> Just punch me in the throat. Grayson was good. Grayson was good. <laughs> liked, uh, liked Mr. Miracle. That was good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Man, it's it's a good thing that, you know, most people in the comic industry are pretty cool and they're not all like Uwe Boll and shit. Yeah, yeah. I imagine they, if they wanted to be, they could. <laughs> yeah, really just challenging people to boxing matches. <laughs> Oh, uh, man, that's good shit. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's the news for this week, everyone. And again, it's uh, it's amazing every week that we're managed to wring that much content out of it, considering that there are no new books and no one's really talking about anything. No. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I figured maybe now we'll turn over because, you know, I always like to do at least an hour on this show uh, to the chat. And if y'all have any questions, now would be a good time to uh, mention them and we'll uh, we'll talk about y'all. Yeah, see, everyone's <laughs> trying to guess who you, who who your interviewee is with. 
Uh, I'll tell you, of everyone I'm reading in the chat right now, no one is right yet. Although I will <laughs> say, you're, you're not too far off because it is someone that I did interview back in another life, back at uh, Name Redacted. <laughs> So, uh, so you're not wrong. If people remember that shit, they might be able to riddle it out. Mm -hmm. uh, any opinion on Megacon? Did something happen with Megacon? What is Megacon? I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> no idea. Y'all seen Waco? Is that a TV show? Yes. No, I haven't seen Waco. I've seen it. I seen oh. it. About, is is it about, about? It's about Waco? Waco, about Heaven's Gate and everything. It's got that. Uh, oh. uh, what's his name? can't remember what his name is he played gambit in the wolverine origins film he plays like the, oh, the yeah, leader yeah. and he's actually really fucking good in it right the t taylor kitsch yeah that's him oh is, is it not a bitch being kitsch anymore no <laughs> is it is, is it that, that, that that's a rather old show like it's a couple of years old now is it but people are rediscovering it now i guess so yeah that's good that's good uh uh, well, Tevi, if it's like any other Comic-Con, it's probably not happening. In fact, uh, what is it? They made it official this week that San Diego Comic-Con is not happening. Yeah, but I think we all knew that was happening. <laughs> we, we did all know. Uh, uh, Dante Kelly asking, any chance you'll read those Boom Power Rangers books? I want to. They're on my list. I got that I want to try and get to, and there's a couple other ones I want to try and get to in one big sitting, but that's definitely on my list. Yeah, well, now that comic's are coming back, like, maybe <laughs> i don't know it yeah. depends on how on how long this the, like comics coming back lasts mm. crusader con how can i start watching wrestling good question because much like comic books there is this perceived barrier for entry to getting in because these are storylines that have been going on sometimes for decades much like comic books i would say there is no wrong way to start i would say just pick uh, a night and start watching for the wwe their flag show uh flagship show is raw which is on monday nights granted now is a really weird fucking time to start watching because there's no crowds and anything <laughs> yeah it's either the best or worst depending uh they just got done wrestlemania which basically means they're starting a new season of wrestling with new champions and new feuds and everything personally i'm an aew man now i think that's a meatier beefier show with more to offer their show is a wednesday night dynamite over on tnt uh that's just really good quality wrestling yeah. and occasionally really good storytelling Though, again, I feel uh, theirs is a little bit more inside baseball to people who have been watching wrestling for a long time, or at the very least, watch their YouTube show, Being the Elite. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, Being the Elite, definitely, like, when I started watching it a couple of weeks ago, definitely helped me, like, watch a couple episodes mm -hmm. of that, kind of understand who these people are, like, yeah. who, who's friends with who this week and what. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's very soap opera in that regard. Uh, Jane, any thought on Justice League Dark Apocalypse? Because he doesn't care. Uh, I'll definitely check it out. I mean, I I really liked that Superman uh, Red Sun movie. And again, as much as I didn't like the shared universe DC concept, I'll be happy to watch it all come to a close and see if they wrap it all up. Yeah, well, apparently it's leading into like the Rebirth era of of the the animated series, apparently. But yeah fingers crossed uh, uh people are also recommending me soul of a dragon which is the like uh, original graphic novel they did for power rangers that's connected but not connected okay uh what else do we got if you could get jonathan hickman to write anything what would it be i mean the man's basically rewritten the wheel on everything that he's started writing what do you think needs the hickman treatment matt i uh, know i don't i'd love to see superman that would be really cool. I'd like to see him do something on Star Wars. He works for Ooh, Marvel. Man. Hey Hickman, what's what's your Star Wars pitch? I have a feeling that like he said something about that, like like he wants to do it or something. I I have a feeling that oh, he's mentioned Star Wars in passing or something. He'd be uh, really fucking cool as Star Wars writer. I mean, they got all that High Republic stuff. You mean you can't put him in on something somewhere? <laughs> uh, Space Lord Joel and Matt, did you hear the Death Metal God bigger? Oh, the story. I thought he meant just death metal music in general. <laughs> yeah, man, did you hear death metal music? It's doing really popular yeah, right yeah, now. People yeah, are really, really enjoying it. Yeah, people are isolating in their homes, just blasting, you know, <laughs> like Megadeth and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you need it. <laughs> no, de death metal, the story got bigger. I mean, most Scott Snyder stories usually do. They usually end up putting in another issue or another one shot or yeah, something. No so, no, I'm not surprised. 
I right. think out of this event, like a, a flash event is actually starting as well called Speed Metal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Dante like, Kelly. Getting the flashy laughs or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's always the case. Dante Kelly there saying, you know, hey, when are you going to start watching One Piece? Because I mentioned that while I have not watched a single frame of the show, I did watch a four hour lecture that was everything that's happened from the beginning to like just now. I <laughs> say <laughs> the One Piece. Yeah, there you go. It was a big piece of One Piece, so I didn't have to watch anything but still got up to speed. And I now know uh, what is, I basically now know the story behind all the memes. You know the meme of the guy where he pushes the zombie down? It's like, not today, Satan. Yeah. <laughs> I, f I finally know what that's about, so I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty good about that now that I know what's going on. Although I do laugh that it's been going on for 15 years and like apparently everyone in that show with superpowers, like really good ones, gets it from Devil Fruit. And the show's been going on for 15 years and they've never explained what the deal with Devil Fruit is. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm like, wow, you, you wouldn't expect that. Most series, it's like, no, you got to explain that shit right away. I would have thought that would have been like arc one after the main arc, like of the first You'd season. Think. <laughs> You'd think that'd be like, you know, if like Game of Thrones went on for 15 years, but never explained what dragons were about. <laughs> uh, what else we got going on? <laughs> Jane saying, hey, uh, commentary for Dark Phoenix when? Yeah. What about that? Yeah. Yeah. Joe, when? Yeah. When? When indeed. Uh, tell you what, next pandemic will do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't put that energy out into the universe. Yeah, there will be another one is Joel. Yeah, don't put Corona two electric Corona Lou. <laughs> uh, but um, but um, but um, the chat say not only have they not explained what Devil Fruit is, they haven't explained what One Piece even is. It's the title, and fifteen That's years true. later, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't know what it is. Apparently, they saw it and they laughed, and that's the only thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a Doctor Strange commentary eventually, probably closer to the movie. We always like to try and line up a commentary closer to a movie. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if <laughs> but when's the next movie coming out? Oh, Jesus, <laughs> when, when indeed, when in fucking deed. I mean, like, look, here's the thing: we probably would have done more commentaries by now if there weren't actually enough news to fill at least an hour, and every week we've filled at least an hour. Yeah, there's just been just that little little bit of news. Little bit of news. There has been just enough to what is it to uh, make a show happen, which is always always really good. Uh, yeah, Amazing Spider-Man says it's supposed to come out in August. Will it, though, or will they move it the same way they're moving all their other movies? Yeah, like all those movies that are com meant to be coming out in August. I don't, I don't think so. I think Wonder Woman's definitely moving. Yeah, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, well, there we go. I think we've officially filled an hour on our end. I think we have, yeah. All right, so thank you, everyone, for asking your questions. We really appreciate it. Sorry this couldn't have been a little bit longer. But we're not just going to sit here in stone silence. Uh, hope you liked the episode. Uh, of course, if you're a patron, you'll get to listen to it first before anyone else, both audio and video. And because these ended up being shorter, Matt was able to get the video and audio much quicker the last week, which was really nice. Yep. <laughs> So uh, be sure to check that one out for everyone else. The show goes live Wednesday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time over on the Cape Joel channel. Uh, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. We really appreciate it. Everyone who has become a patron during this trying time, I really, really appreciate it because, you know, you've helped me not worry about food and rent as much during this time when there's no new Absolutely. comics. So big, big, big ups to you, everyone. Must uh, much, much appreciate it. So I guess we'll start winding down the show, and uh, Matt and I will see you all next week, everyone. Yeah, bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.